At the end of the 20th century, a change in Canada's laws redefined the relationship between the employer and employees. What does this mean to you as a union member? On one hand, it gives you a voice in the workplace. On the other hand, it gives you a new responsibility to make your voice heard. Hello, my name is Janet Stewart and I'm a proud member of the Canadian Union of Skilled Workers. In this 21st Century Insight, we're going to look at how employment law cleared the way for unions to move in a new direction and how that move has made an impact on your rights and responsibilities. In 1999, CUSW's founders aimed to build a union for the 21st century. To do that, they set three ambitious goals. The members of CUSW would determine the direction of the organization, the organization would serve as a path to jobs, and CUSW would enable its members to have a voice in the day-to-day -day operations of the workplace. In the old economy, workers conceded control of the workplace to their employers. We accepted the idea that management has the right to manage. Workers, whether union or non-union, threw their efforts into fighting over wages and conditions, forcing employers to provide safe, healthy workplaces, and getting a fair share of the profits earned through their labor. Meanwhile, employers strove to maintain control over the bargaining power of the workforce. The result was a battle for the hearts and minds of the workforce. Employers tried to convince workers that there was no need for a union, and unions battled back, arguing that they offered a path to better wages and conditions. But something good came out of that conflict. The labor disputes of the 20th century laid the groundwork for a new legal framework called employment law. This law recognized the rights of workers to bargain collectively and to have a voice in the workplace. Now, when workers recognize a union to represent them in their employment relationship, they gain legal rights that do not exist in a non-union workplace. Employment law differs from common law in ways that are not well understood. Where there is no recognized union, the Master and Servant Act contained within common law governs the employment relationship between the employer and the worker. Under this law, the worker takes direction from the employer. The employer retains the uncontested right to define the employment relationship, which means the employer has the right to hire and fire, set conditions for health and safety, and set employee compensation in accordance with legal standards. Can the employee challenge these actions? Yes, but only one way by going to court. Employment law redefines the employment relationship. For example, it limits the employer's uncontested rights. Another major difference happens when employees form a union. They receive a legal voice in the employment relationship. This voice gives workers a say about the issues that impact them in the workplace, including the right to negotiate how they participate in and contribute to work activities. Union members can exercise their voice through collective bargaining or by sitting on workplace committees. In the 20th century, unions failed to make much progress on exercising the right to voice, but from its beginning, CUSW emphasized participation. Our union has also worked to achieve governance goals at the committee and unit levels. Now it's time to take the same approach in the workplace. The new economy provides more opportunity than ever for union members to have a say in how work is organized. By exercising your voice, you can contribute to the success of your employer and raise your own satisfaction. As a union member, you have the knowledge and the right to voice. You are no longer a servant. So step up to the responsibility. Make your voice heard in the workplace. What are some of the challenges and solutions to increasing the member voice in the workplace? To find out, be sure to watch the fifth episode in the 21st Century series. Bye for now.